an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? We really live in a world of global fragmented production. So what you see is that you have specialization not just in industries, but in specific stages of industries in specific places. So the US, Korea, Israel, and Taiwan have all extremely successful semiconductor industries, all of them contributing to a product, let's call it a laptop. And yet what they really do is very different. And the most important thing, the distributional of the income, of the fruits of their success, is distributed differently in different societies. It also means, if you take it seriously about globalization, that in order to excel in different stages, you need to have different innovational capacities. So if you want to be excelling, being the pure play foundry of semiconductors, a place where people with new design come to actually do their chips, and you need to constantly excel in that, you need to have different set of innovations, different financial vehicles, different abilities to invest a very large amount of money, than if what you want to do is to create a lot of startups of five to a hundred engineers that come up with new ideas and somebody else make them. That means that there's no such thing as innovation policy per se, even if you decide to pick a specific industry, which is a big question. Which means that what the states should do when new states come to look at innovation policy and want to think about growth is understand where it is, what it is, where does it want to be in a stage of production, and not assume that to look like Silicon Valley should be the goal. The so one good thing about the near globalization is that you actually have a lot of entry points, which you didn't have in the past. So let's talk about concrete examples. Um, on the one side we have China, which have used, let's call it low level uh, entry points to do what I call the run of Red Queen, basically be at the cusp of innovation but not pushing it back, but be the place where if you need to uh, produce an iPhone that has never been produced before using glass technology that has never been used before, even if all the technology comes from the US where you actually play and produce the iPhone within three months, is China, even if it does buy mainly Taiwanese and American companies, which create huge amount of money coming to China and a very large amounts of jobs. People claim that China might not needs indigenous innovation, needs to look in Silicon Valley. On the other hand, what China has created with its high-tech industry is pretty good jobs now, if you think about the engineers that they use, not just manufacturing, for hundreds of millions of people with lower profit margins, but a lot of money, compared to American companies that use all their innovation to make a very small number of people unbelievably rich and almost no jobs for most Americans.